This season on Open Minds, I've teamed up with Freddie Silva, author and world-renowned expert on sacred sites, Paula Harris, investigative journalist and author in the field of extraterrestrial-related phenomena, local Sardinia guide Rosella Lodo, and Luigi Muscas, a leading researcher on giant bones in Sardinia who has discovered evidence pointing to the connection between the island of Sardinia and the ancient culture of Atlantis. Their elaborate stone sites, roughly 7,000 of them, are sprinkled all over the island, revealing tombs, bones, and highly sophisticated architecture. It's speculated that people from Atlantis, including a giant race of people, emigrated to Sardinia with their great knowledge, leaving their tombs and temples, called Naragi, behind. With help from a team of remote viewers, led by Angela Thompson, local Sardinia legends, and the writings of Edgar Cayce and Ruth Montgomery, we uncover a deeper understanding of these giants, their naragi, and the mystery surrounding their incredible history on this island. We're taking little breadcrumbs and trying to make a wonderful loaf of bread out of it. The message that there may have been highly sophisticated cultures before our current time begs many questions that we've been grappling with. Why did they disappear? And how many more are there buried under the sands of time? Welcome. You are in for an adventure. I'm here in Sardinia with Paula Harris and Freddie Silva, and even though we're in this lovely little apartment in Cagliari, Sardinia, we have spent the last three days out in the field, and we've been examining some mysteries that none of us have ever seen before. I can't wait to get started on this because one of the subjects that we covered is that of giants. It's a subject that has a big giggle factor around it right now, but we're going to take the giggle factor out of it by going out into the field to the tombs of the giants. And we're going to do this part of the story with Paula Harris. And Paula, for you, it's the third time here. For the rest of it, it us, it was our first time here. So. First of all, let's launch into Sardinia itself and the nature of the people. And when you first started coming here, what, how, you, how you experience Sardinia? Well, uh, Sardinia is a little known island because everybody goes to Sicily or Corsica, and Sardinia is right next to Sicily. But I was invited to speak about UFOs. That's how I came to Sardinia. Rosella, whom you'll meet, uh, she, she invited me to speak on the UFO phenomenon in these very, very uh, small villages. So when they hear an American comes, what happens next is everybody comes out of the woodwork. Uh, they'll either come to me about sightings that they've had over military bases, but this particular gentleman came forward and he said, come to my farm, he said, because I want to tell you about the giants. Of course, this isn't my area of study, but I went anyway with uh, uh, some friends and with Rosella, he had artifacts, and then he brings out his father and his uncle, and they tell me their stories. And this happened about 10 years ago. I find this fascinating because, you know, something like this, first of all, it would be hard to dig up that story because people are so afraid of being made fun of. It's not that Luigi hasn't had his share of trouble and ridicule over the subject, but it's something you really don't even talk about in most of the Western world. The subject of giants is verboten. And we're going to get into it and talk about, even in his journey, what happened after discovering the bones of giants and such in his youth. But this particular topic is, I don't know, it's, it's as bad, if not worse, than the subject of UFOs in terms of any kind of disclosure. I mean, here we're in Sardinia, where it has the tombs of giants, Tumba di Giganti, right, all over the island. And you can go to them, there's no guardrails, there's nothing. They're just sitting out in nature alone. And the people actually don't seem to embrace the notion that there were giants here. Talk about your own understanding of that through the years, what the common person has come to believe, like all of us, with a lot of conditioning from the media and churches and everything else, about this topic. The, the way of telling a country's history is not by 
reading the uh, authoritative books of anthropologists. It's by talking to the people in the villages because most history, especially in islands like Sardinia and other places that are not really, uh, you know, tourist places, is that this goes through family from generation to generation. The real history goes through families. So Luigi's family knew about the giants. I mean, knew about the giants because there were bones all over. They were discovering them on his property, in caves, everywhere. When he was a child, he saw them. He saw the, uh, what he calls the authorities, come and take these bones away. Huge skulls. This is what we call witness testimony, which is the only kind of work I ever do. It's, it's a witnesses, the regular people of the village, but of course, they're not allowed to talk. Their life is made miserable. They're told by formal archeology, span do not talk about this. And of course, they can ruin your life. I mean, so Luigi's taken a risk. He said he's got, had a lot of, lost a lot of friends. Uh, because he wants to talk, because he thinks that this is such an important aspect of the history of this island. And, I mean, in that way, it's akin to Roswell. After Roswell occurred, then the governmental agencies, military, came around and said, you won't be talking about this. And it really frightened the local people. And they pretty much kept their mouths shut for many, many years. They were afraid, in this case, this is uh, anthropology, this is organized uh, an institution where this doesn't fit in. Right. Where are you going to fit giants into the history of the Mediterranean? Right. It does fit into mythology, right. though, and it does fit into oral tradition. So if you're going to take everything into consideration and not take the institution's point of view only, and you talk to the townspeople, you'll get the real truth. And that's what you do, and that's what I do. Right. And now, you mentioned a little bit ago, you did have the opportunity quite a few years ago now um, to meet with Luigi when his father and his uncle were still alive. Now, in his book, he also has the testimony of other locals, neighbors and such, talking about their experiences with the giant bones when they were kids and such. Unfortunately, all these lovely people that we see in the book have passed away. So we need to stop teasing everybody and go out into the field. We'll go out and first we're going to meet with Luigi, okay? And we're going to get a little bit of his life story because as you alluded to earlier, for Luigi, the whole thing with the giants personally started when he was a pubescent boy and he was helping with the family sheep, grazing sheep, which took him out in the field for many hours a day. Let's go talk to Luigi. First, Luigi, thank you so much for letting us come and talk to you because I know you've had some harassment and difficulty because what you share with us um, is not necessarily accepted by a lot of the archaeologists and government and so forth. The same happens in America, so I appreciate that it's a little risky for you to talk to us. Thank you so much for coming here because you're letting me tell my story. This has to do with Atlantis. This has to do with the world, and I thank you again for listening. The story that has emerged is an amazing story about the presence of giants in Sardinia and a very, very ancient culture. So can you talk about your personal part of it as a little boy? It's a story that's very old, but I'm going to tell you from the point of view of my own family. When the family got together, they would tell stories about my ancestors coming from the line of the giants. My relatives had their first trucks after the Second World War. They used to bring grains into the center of Sardinia. Once they found two skeletons of the giants blocking one of these old roads. So they had to take the grains on their backs. I grew up with these stories and I remember about 70% of what I was told as a little boy. From two years old, I was used to this. But now that I'm 57, I know the places where they took the skeletons, where they got the skeletons of the giants. It's normal to me. So what was interesting is he said that he found some of these bones in an area that was abandoned. He calls the Lost City and the tomb of the Atlantean king because he believes that he came, his people came from Atlantis, and that Sardinia is the remnant of Atlantis, right? 
Yes, he's very proud of that. He talks about Atlantis. But he, not only him, his whole family have, have believed that. So we go back generations here. <laughs> <laughs>